Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the After Deck. We chat about the latest Below Deck episodes each week. Let's dive in, Lanes. Can't wait. Cheers. Cheers, Lanes. How are you? Good. I must say you're looking exceptionally stunning tonight. Thank you. Lanes has had a hair done. Just came out of the hairdressers or the hair salon. Just for me tonight. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Tonight we're talking about Below Deck Med Season 9, Episode 8, Dirty Laundry. In this episode, just when Asia thinks it's smooth sailing, the interior hit the whitecaps. Again. Ian fails to see the wood for the trees and Jono wraps a pear in alpha. Oh, sorry, gold leaf. <laughs> That's what I say later. <laughs> That's what I say later too. Fuck. All right. Oh, first of all, welcome to our new Chief Stew on the Patreon, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi, yeah. Where do we start? Well, we start, we're at the first day of charter and Sandy is manoeuvring her way out of this boxed-in position that she's got a, well, she hasn't got herself in it. No. The gazillion million dollar boat put she's her in it. Parked her in. And everyone's watching how she's going to get out of this. You can see the lines. She's got to steer clear of those. And there's fires coming up the rear. All the ash in the boat. Yes. It's an intense situation. And if that's not enough, next minute we hear Nathan saying, Cap, we just have a wee tender passing over the bow. I'm like, where did that come from? We don't need another boat floating around us. Especially not a little one. What are you doing there, wee tender? I reckon that wee tender is checking the ground lines of the super, super, mega, mega, mega yacht. I thought that too. Mm. Just so you know. I'm here. Mm, checking my lines. I'm protecting this boat. Yes. They're closing in on the ground lines. She thrusts to starboard until she's all clear. Then she moves forward and we're out. She's amazing. I love it how the guest was like, flip it and reverse it, Sandy. <laughs> They're nice guests. Oh, so nice. Easy going, complimentary. Grateful. So Aisha's singing a song. Around the boat. I'm going to wet my pants because i got urine in my bladder. As she's running down flight after flight <laughs> after flight of stairs. It's a good song. It is. She's got no time to go to the toilet. Hey, she's got no time to do anything because she's doing three jobs. She's always thinking about how and when she can go to the toilet. <laughs> she we- does have three jobs. <laughs> You're right. We've got Brie back in the laundry writing out everything, like everything. Like one bath mat again. <laughs> the reason why Bree says she's writing it down is because she says her memory isn't good. I hear you. Yeah, but I still. I know. It needs to be a different system. We all know this. Just label the clothes and then you don't need to remember anything. We can't. Yeah, but you, she still needs a system because she can't do that with guest laundry. But I go back to at the end of the day, Aisha should have sat down with her at one point and said, okay, this is how I do laundry. Mm -hmm. If not then, by now. Yeah, and and have our laminated sheet. Yes. That I said should be in the laundry. Or send them to our school. Yeah. What was it called again, Lance? (laughs) The Carla and Lance School of Below Decking. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) (laughs) So we're en route to Hedro. Mm. And Nathan tells us that he feels really shitty for Joe yeah. being demoted off the bow. And he says, you know, like, I'm just happy to help him learn on the job, but I don't feel good that he's been thrown off the bow now. He's just a good friend and he feels bad for him. He's really sweet, isn't he? Isn't he? There was no ego in him no. when he was like, well, I'm the bow guy because I'm better. No way. He just felt bad for Joe. And the fact that he says to Gail, like, I would have helped him. Yes. Learn. Instead of him being demoted. Yes. Well, he's not demoted, but you know what I mean. Kicked off the bow. Yeah, because Nate's his bow guy, (laughs) her bow guy. (laughs) So this is Gail and Nathan are chatting to about what they are. He was like, no, we're not friends. Maybe we're colleagues, possibly acquaintances, having a bit of a rib. She's like, ouch. They're doing this dance now, aren't they? It's the after the kiss dance where. It's Gail's dance. Yeah. Where are we? What's going to happen? Like, I do feel for both of them. I'm feeling more for Nathan. Yeah, of course. At this point, because it's happened a few times, the push and the pull. Yeah. 
But he just says, you know, look, she's back in her own head again. I'm just going to give her space to figure out what she wants. I don't blame her, but he does have a fancy for her, like. Oh, yeah, for shizzle. So they drop anchor and deck team start getting out the water toys. Uh, Bree gets a call back to Captain's cabin. Did you see Joe jump off the side like he was Flipper? Yeah, that was amazing. But obviously, like, I was worried, like, mum worry. I'm like, oh, are you going to make, like, you don't clip the side of the boat and then hurt yourself? It was like he was a sea creature at SeaWorld and he was just, oh. Yeah. Off the side. I was like, you can do it. So Brie goes into Captain Sandy's cabin and there's, I don't know how, lands is another laundry issue. Pants are grey. Not white. No, they're grey. Sandy can't wear grey knickerbockers. No, she is (laughs) a white Knickerbocker. After our conversation this morning about these pants and Sandy, Carl and I had breakfast together this morning. They're pants. They're not knickerbockers. Are they capri pants? No, they're even longer now. Oh, they're three quarters. They're, no, they're proper pants. Oh. We've, so, we've got the extra fabric. Right. So we do have more than one one, yes. one type of cut that she's wearing. Yes. She's got a casuals yeah. and then her more formals. Yeah. <laughs> and then her captain's outfit. Yes. So Aisha's kind of hearing Sandy talking to Brie about this and she's like, oh, for fuck's sake, as soon as she leaves the cabin, Aisha says to her, you know, you shouldn't be putting lights and darks together. And then she's like, you know, promise that you're not. Brie's like, yeah, promise. Promise. She hasn't been given the best team here. No, and she's still one down, let's not forget. Because of the stupid drippy cabin. (laughs) Why hasn't that been fixed? The stupid drippy cabin. Cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be talking about it every day with the engineers. Oh, mate, if they can sort out dropping an anchor, heaving that up off the bottom of the ocean, why can't they fix a drippy cabin? Grease is full of plaster. They yes. could get any old plasterer from the mainland and bring them on to <laughs> plaster up that ceiling. Oh, mate, the fucking donkeys <laughs> at the end of this episode could fix that cabin. <laughs> anyway... We're back in the laundry. Yes. And um, <laughs> oh god. Oh, Bree walks in and Ellie's in the laundry and she says, "Hello, um, I got washing." And Ellie says, "Sorry, I'm just doing a job. Please stop chasing me out because we don't have anything to do upstairs." Is she now British? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really doing some accents tonight. <laughs> Bree's just like, "All righty," and she walks to the corner of the laundry, Ellie leaves the laundry. Yes, note for later. And Bree speaks to camera and gives us a glimpse into her laundry system. Messy. She has organised messy piles and when Ellie comes in, she messes up her messy piles. Yeah. I'm enjoying Bree's <laughs> camera moments in this episode. Mm, she definitely needs a system. I'm going to create the system. I'll send it to Bravo. I'll say, listen, get this to below deck cast members, this is what they need to learn before they get on board. Like flight attendants. Correct. They have to learn all this shit before they start. Just do an online course. This is how you do the laundry. Stewmanship. Yes. I don't know if Bree is getting paranoid, but she does say to camera, I think Ellie wants me off the boat. I think she's going to be trying to stitch me up. And what we get next is Ellie saying, muttering to herself, well, I'm going to have to keep an eye out on this one. Mm Mm-hmm. So they both think the other is trying to do a stitch up. Yeah, the other's out for the other one. Exactly. More so Ellie than Brie, I think. I think so too. So the guests are doing water sports. And did you hear one of the ladies, um, one of the guests, say thank you to Gail for putting out all of the equipment? No, I didn't. I thought that's so nice and it's rare that you see that. Yeah. Like it's always like, where's my... Whatever. But it was nice that she's like, thanks so much for putting all this equipment out. Charleston people are nice. They are. They're friendly folk. They are, indeed. And also, how was the backflip on the platform? Oh, exceptional. Cheerleader style. Yeah. Or marching band, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> the notebook. Yes. So and We're not Ellie- talking about the movie. Ell- no. Ellie's in the laundry and she spies the notebook. Ellie's like, fuck off. A list of laundry crimes? What the fuck is going on here? Bree's not cataloguing the laundry to do her job better. She's cataloguing Ellie's fuck-ups to prove she deserves to stay. No colour catches with Gail's load bottom right. 
Gail's stuff was put in clean pile but smelt dirty. She would not be writing that about herself. Swimming towels were washed with interior rags, bottom left. <laughs> this is one for Captain Lee's new show, Deadly Waters, but we can call it Laundry Crimes. Yes. Da, da, da. Ellie's pissed off again. She's pissed. They arrive at their destination and she's got her back into like a rocky cove. This place looks Amazing. It looks so cute. I've never seen them like dock on rocks before, have you? No. I love it. Jono talks to Cameron now and he hasn't got a lot of experience making Greek food. He's going to phone a friend. A friend who has an honour. A yaya. A yaya. So yaya is going to tell him how to make the perfect vine leaves. Lots of fresh spinach, leeks, not onions, and good feta. Mm, yum. Not shit feta. No shit feta. Good feta. Then we switch over to Brie in her cabin on the floor chatting to a friend on the phone about Ellie. This friend is like, I've fucking heard this a hundred times, Brie. She listens for a bit, then she goes, okay, well, yep, I'm going to leave you. Bye-bye. Her advice? Just chill. Chill. (laughs) Who cares? I don't really care (laughs) about your laundry problems, Brie. And then Brie's just like, okay, bye. (laughs) She she is chill, (laughs) Brie. She is. How could you get more chill? Yeah, no, you couldn't. It should be like on Valium. Yes, maybe she... Shut your neck. (laughs) I was worried when they were showing that scene that Ellie was going to be hearing it. That's what I thought too. She's going to walk in. Yep. It's pretty game to just lie in your cabin. Right. With the door open, talking on loudspeaker about your co-worker. I would have been on the bed facing the door so I could quickly... And I would have had the door closed... Yes. So I would have seen the handle. Not it's, that we do things it's like that. It's 109 lanes. <laughs> Deck team are prepping to enter Hydra. Yeah. She's got to do like a 180 and reverse into this town. Sandy tells us she's going to back it up like a mofo. She's excited. She she is. It's exactly what I thought. You can tell that she's looking forward to doing this. Yes. And they're basically going to back into some fucking rocks. Yep. At 60 metres, sorry, from the rocks, they drop the anchors Mm. and then they sort of glide in. Ian radios that they're 25 metres to the rocks and Sandy asks if he can toss his heaving lines. Oh, no. No. There's no one there. There's no one to toss to. Could you see them? I could see them and Gail's walking up and she's like, Ian, yeah, there is. There, There are people there. So he radios back to Sandy and says, I think... There's guys walking to the heaving lines now. And where else were those guys going to walk to? At this point, they were walking down the little jetty that goes nowhere. What were they doing, going for a swim? And then but he yells to them, are you guys going to catch the heaving <laughs> lines? Like, is, it, is that you? Is that what you're doing on our little dock? Fuck. And that's when Sandy. She just like throws her hands in the air and she's like, are you fucking kidding? He's not. He's not. He tells her to back up more and she's like, the rocks, mate. I don't want to hit the rocks. Sandy says to camera that Ian doesn't look before he speaks. No. And she's going to keep an eye on him. Now, to that, I say, <laughs> look, look out, out. <laughs> Ian, because you're now in Sandy's eye zone. That's not a good zone to be in. No. You don't want to be in that zone. She's got it fully sus now, I think. Oh, how could you not? Aisha runs down to Ellie. I thought Ellie was going to get in trouble here, but she says, Ellie, would you like to do lunch service? Do you think you feel comfortable? This has made Ellie's day. Mm. She's really happy about this. And she says, yes, I think so. I actually think Ellie needs more responsibility, but she also needs to be able to... Do it? Yeah. And when she doesn't know what she's doing with this added responsibility, ask... So Aisha just says, okay, great, Set the, get the table set by two. It is so bad, though, that Aisha's been doing so much. Like they do say they're halfway through this season. You'd expect a lot more. Oh, my God, like so much more. When she said that, I was shocked that they're halfway through and that those stews are still at the level that they're at. And she has been doing breakfast service, lunch service, dinner service. Yep. No, bro. She, the girl can't even poo, let alone pee. She, I would be physically and mentally exhausted. Mm. So Ellie very nicely goes up to Bree at the bar and says, in this voice we haven't heard for a few seasons, so a condescending. few episodes, uh, Bree, 
you'll be on lunch service today. Will that be okay? We'll set the table. I'll need some help serving water and running platters. I'm like, good plan, Ellie. Why the fuck doesn't it happen? And we'll get into that a bit later, but I'm I'm annoyed with Ellie and how she's speaking to Bree. And then she says to Camera that with Bree, the energy is not matched. So she's basically saying that Bree doesn't have the same energy as her. Uh, it is what it is, and I'll have to deal with it. So she wasn't saying our energies together don't vibe very well, but I have to work with her, so we'll deal with it. She's just saying. I thought that's what she was saying, no. that they've got bad juju. Mm. Okay. I took it as Brie, her energy is not matched like mine. Yes. Gail helps Ian figure out a safe way to get the guests off. Thanks, Gail. I mean, he's there. He's doing something he isn't really doing a good job of putting these platforms in to try and get them. He jumps over the rocks like it's easy. Well, he's a river canyoner. And Gail's like, they're not going to be able to do that. That's not okay for them to jump over the rocks like that because when they do get off – the way that Gail has put that third platform. <laughs> yes. Sandy's even out helping. Yeah. The guests aren't going to want to MacGyver their way off the boat. Even with that safety platform going up there onto those rocks, they're still on hands and knees. <laughs> One of them is. <laughs> She's like, oh, it happens late, but she does say, you know, uh, I don't like hiking. Oh. <laughs> this is not hiking. <laughs> Back to Ellie. Yep. She's making drinks, making cocktails. So... Ellie radios to Brie that there's laundry to be collected in the first port cabin. Random. Like, and and the timing? Yeah. Like, why is that urgent? So Brie goes off to do it. It's 1.04 and it's just Ellie with the guests. So she's making drinks and cocktails and then she starts peppering Brie with the requests. Brie, bring me some lemon. And she's kind of whispering it. Do we have celery, Brie? Can you come help me put olives on a toothpick? Are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Aisha is listening to this in her cabin, just going, fuck me. Can't have a break. No. I mean, I think in Aisha's mind, she's envisaging them both up there, making drinks, setting a table. Yes. Getting ready for lunch. So even when Brie does deliver the celery, the lemon, and does the olives, Ellie never asks her to stay or never directs her to do the table or never says, oh, while you're up here, can you get the water jugs ready and probably get the cutlery out, start to do the table for me because they're wanting a lot of drinks and I'm kind of held up here. I think Ellie wants all the attention of being the best guest bartender slash experience. Mm Mm-hmm. She's like, only I can do this. I'm the best. Yes. So, Brie, just stay away. Go back to the laundry. Until I need more celery and I'll call you when I need you. Now she wants horseradish. (laughs) Brie, Brie, have you seen any horseradish anywhere? (laughs) Brie, Brie, I found some. It's then at 1.45. We've got 15 minutes to go till lunch and Aisha's up. She's not having her full break. She can't relax. So she walks through the galley and says to Jono, Ellie's running lunch service today. And he's like, okay. <laughs> but she says to him, I can't relax. I'm I'm stressed. Right. She's back. She walks in. She's like, uh, the table's not ready. What the fuck? The bar's a mess. Bree's nowhere in sight. So she asks Ellie, why isn't the table set? I've been serving cocktails the whole time. One job, Ellie, one job, table set by two. She's got 10 minutes to do it. This is classic Ellie time management. Yeah. What I've come to really learn about her is that she cannot multitask. No, she can't. She cannot think about two things at once. And she always has a reason. Yeah, because she can't think of more than one thing at a time. (laughs) So her reason is always, well, I was attending to the guests. I was doing cocktails with the guests. I've just finished cocktails with the guests. All all the time. All the time because that's the most important thing. It's a clever thing to say because it is the most important thing. It is. But but it doesn't mean you can't delegate and multitask. That's right. And Aisha knows the guests are the most important thing, but the guest experience will be shit if you don't have the table set 
And, and if you don't have lunch, yeah. Mm. So you can't actually just focus on them the whole time. Yeah. Because the guest experience is more than just talking to them and serving them drinks. Mm. And she's not the fastest. Like when you look at her, like Aisha's running rings around both of them. Yeah. And Ellie's just doing cocktails. Yeah. And she's still learning, obviously, because she wasn't sure about pickle water. If pickle water's in the bar fridge, what do you think it's in the bar fridge for? Cocktails. Oh, yeah. I, I do have pickle water. I do have it. Yeah. <laughs> so Aisha interestingly says here, I'll start setting the table and catch us up. And Ellie says, she's giving me the chance and now she's taking it away. Five more minutes we would have had that table done. What I don't like here is how Aisha handled it. Yeah. What she says is, I just didn't feel right about it, but don't worry, it's not you. It's 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 just me. Yeah. So she's made it a her thing, not a them thing. Yeah. Or an Ellie thing. That's not what she said to Brie. Exactly. When I, I have a problem with this. Yeah. When Brie says to her, you have no confidence in us, Aisha says, yeah, well, nothing was done. It's a very different response because she knows that Ellie's a firecracker. And we've seen this the whole season so far that Aisha treats Ellie when speaking to them about things work-related differently to Brie. Yes. Also, I'm just going to say in her defence, they've got five minutes to get the table set. So now is not the time to pick a bone or what's it called? A fight. (laughs) But see, that that's like they still had five minutes when she says that to Brie. Again, giving Brie more than Ellie. And also... Brie should never have said that to Aisha in a questioning way. You have no confidence in us because Brie said, yeah, well, I wouldn't have confidence in us either. I'm like, well, why would you ask the question? Yeah, that was pretty funny (laughs) to camera. So at 2.15, lunch is being served. It does look delicious. This is my lunch lens. Oh, is it? Fuck yeah, it is. Yeah. Fresh pita, souvlaki. King prawns. You can have those. Greek salad. Delish. Tzatziki. Yeah, yum. Sandy wants it too. She wants some Greek salad and pinna. Then we're back in the crew mess and Gail and Nathan are having lunch and having a chat. They love salmon. <laughs> I like I could eat salmon all day. They've run out of things to talk about because they're Isn't talking this about salmon great? Oh, delicious. So fresh. So fresh. I could eat this fresh salmon <laughs> all the time. She gets a text from the BF. Oh. Nathan says something about how he didn't sleep last night. Does she shush him? No, she goes, uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I thought she said, shh. And <laughs> no. I was like, Gail. I thought it was just a mm hmm. Well, she completely gets into her phone chats and he's like, Are oh, you texting your boyfriend? And then she says to camera again that she's got guilt. Gail, I'm just going to say it, Del. Cut him loose. You've got to break up with this guy. He's guilt tripping you. He's not a great guy. You know that. You're not that into him. If you've got feelings for Nathan, be cruel to be kind and end it. Yes, sister. Do you know what I loved about the tour of Hydra? Hydra. Aisha's knowledge. Of no, it. that was shit. <laughs> I mean, the town itself is amazing. I loved all the little cats of Greece that we got to see. Did you? Yeah. They looked quite healthy, the cats of Greece. You like cats? Even the, I don't like cats, but these street cats were cute. Yeah. They weren't feral. No. They're obviously eating some good fish. Yeah, salmon probably. Mm-hmm. Next minute, Aisha wants to poop on the street like a donkey. Well, that's the only modes of transport. Walking. Or a donkey. Mm. Would you ride a donkey? Yeah. Okay. Would you poop on the street like a donkey? No. No. That was horse shit at the end of my street today. (laughs) Yes, you said that. How do you know it wasn't donkey poo? I haven't seen any donkeys around my neighbourhood. How do you know Aisha wasn't on your street this morning? (laughs) (laughs) She does two big ones. (laughs) If that's Aisha's poo, um, there's some problems. I know horse shit when I see it. I know you do because you're a horsey girl. (laughs) Okay, back on the boat, we've got Sandy who gets a FaceTime from her girlfriend, Leah. Isn't she gorgeous? I didn't know that they'd been together that long. Yeah. And she's going to be coming in three weeks. That's why Sandy's excited. Of course. I don't have to go a whole season without seeing my lovely fiancé at this time. They're not married yet, are they? No, she does it in the three weeks when she comes on the show. Oh, yeah, they're just girlfriends. Yes, it happens. Oh, my God, we're going to get to see it. Yes. (gasps) Yes. So (laughs) Sandy's doubly excited because she's thinking, I'm going to propose. Yes. All right, we're back on the Aisha tour and the guests asked her when that building was built. 
So this was built quite some time ago and many people have resided in it, including a lot of Grecians. Thinks on her feet, doesn't she? Grecia's history tour. <laughs> I would have laughed at it though. Oh, yeah. They did. Yeah. So the guests come back. The yeah. guests come back on board after their tour and tonight is Sparkle Night. So we're going to have lots of sequins and the primary would like Joe to perform. And we find out Gail has some talents too, which we'll talk about later. She sure does. Isn't she what? Ellie and Joe are putting some water away and he's singing and she tells him he's got a good voice. I'm like, here we go. It's the start. And she says that she's got a good voice for meditation and hypnosis. I don't know about that. We'd have to, like, test it out. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. She does speak to camera after that and says she's warming up to Joe, and Bree's feelings don't bother her. Oh, no. There's no girl code when it's Ellie. No, it doesn't matter. No, no, because she has rank. Yes. Yes, yes. Because there is hierarchy. There's double standards with girl code. Yeah. It only counts if you're a subordinate. Yeah, or the first person to do it. Yes, even more so. Yeah. Mm. She doesn't say she's looking forward to spending more time with Joe, though, Lane. Mm -mm. She's looking forward to spending time with Riz. (laughs) Fucking this had me going. Do you remember a few weeks ago when I taught you what Riz meant? Yeah. Yeah. Lanes, we're so old that we're up with the new kids lingo. Mm. And Ellie's proving her age too because she says to camera, because the cameraman's like, well, what's Riz? And she's like, it's that lingo that the kids use these days. Mm. And if you don't know, it's short for charisma. <laughs> so Aisha's at the bar with Ellie. She's happy that they're being professional. So she kind of comments to Ellie about that. And as soon as she said, I'm really happy that you're being professional, Ellie is unprofessional and says, I just checked out of the drama. You know, this morning you sent me to laundry and I started folding things and she came in and basically told me to leave because she's there now. And I said, I'm just here to help you in laundry. She literally stormed out of the laundry. Like, this is really disrespectful, the way you're behaving. Do you want to know what we talk about after each episode? Well, come on over to the Patreon because there you can get early ad-free episodes plus our bonus weekly wrap-up show. We love our Patreon community Click the link in the show notes and come and join us. See you there. Number one, she did not tell her to leave. She said, I can do it. Number two, she didn't even fucking leave the laundry, so how could she storm out? She just backed off and put herself in the corner. And Ellie left the laundry. And three... What was really disrespectful? Nothing. Yeah. I didn't see anything disrespectful in that communication. Not at all. Aisha does say here that she knows that, you know, Brie loses a place in laundry if other people go in there, but the laundry can't only be hers, which is true. Yeah, true. So she says, yeah, and she's starting to write a crime list of all of my crimes I've committed in laundry. So first of all, what's interesting here is that Ellie is confessing. Yes, to having done those things that yes. she's read in the notebook. Because, uh-huh. of course, why would Brie write them if Brie did them? Brie wouldn't. Aisha's like, what? And Ellie says, yes, but I'm not going to get involved. <gasps> Are you not, Ellie? Did you not just start the whole train going again? It's just her nature, though. She, this is what she does. Brie is saying nothing. Ever. And also with the fucking notebook. If you don't want to bring it to your chief stew's attention that you've been fucking up in the laundry, say nothing about it. Aisha won't take it like that, though, because Bree's mostly in the laundry. But Ellie then says, I'm not getting involved because she twists it to make it me causing problems. It's too much. Oh, she's just twisted it. Yes. Yeah. Everything Ellie says. Twisted and elevated for extra drama. Yeah, not true. Not true. Just a little reminder, Ellie. 
she's going to watch this back. She has. In fact, she's watching it back right now. She has. She's already she commented has. on it. She has. We'll talk about that in the wrap-up. All right. We have the sparkly guests, the sparkly evening. Someone's even wearing sparkly disco balls. And um, Joe and Gail are getting dressed. Joe goes into his cabin. I don't know what the fuck happens here, but he's talking to Nathan, who's half asleep, and he just, like, falls into the bathroom door like some spirit has come at him and the light switches off at the same time. That's exactly what I thought. Hilarious. It was so funny. I was laughing at this. I think Nathan said, oh, it's the ghost of Bree's past. <laughs> it was really funny. So they're getting ready and then we have this dinner served. This is an interesting choice, Lanes. This is a one-night charter and Jono is serving healthy grilled lobster with cauliflower rice. Now, we don't know what was on their preference sheet. Mm. So this might have been a request. They might have said we want healthy meals. I don't know. But cauliflower rice, I don't want that on a fucking super yacht. No, I don't want that. I can make that at home for my Tuesday night vegetarian meal. Yeah. Even the lobster looked rubbery. I was going to say overdone. There was no colour on it. Yeah. They said it was delicious. As they eat, Joe and Gail practice their routine Mm. and Ian is in his bed counting his fingers. Don't know why, but at the end of 10 he goes to sleep. Yeah, couldn't count anymore. Just drops. Can't get past 10. Must be a um, relaxation technique. Why has he got a towel on his head? I don't know. And why Why is his fingers up what, literally counting? Yeah, yeah don't know. We'll have Just to. one for the Ian archives. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ian. These uh, editors are just like, what fucking weirdness can we find on Ian today? I know. Imagine he's probably a really nice guy. Possibly. I'm I just... mean, he's not a nasty person. No, I just shit on him every episode. (laughs) If anyone could complain about a bad edit, it's Ian. (laughs) (laughs) Or Ellie. Well. I know, I know, I'm just. We're seeing the good and the bad of Ellie. All we're seeing from Ian is the dum-dum bit. At least you can count to ten. All right. So dessert is being plated up. Again, flowing on from dinner, what an interesting dessert to have. On a super yacht. Oh. No, no, no. There can be pear done so much more elevated than that. Yeah, no, I'm saying I don't have a problem with the pear. It's like in a pool of... Wet stuff. Yep. It was citrus. It's citrus. wet on wet on wet. With a ton of alfoil. <laughs> And before the guest even said it, I thought this looks like a jacket potato. Yeah, and they said it. I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, he's just taken – it wasn't even abstract. You know how you can see gold leaf like flaked on – Sparing. Yes. It's like truffle. Yes. You don't just get it out of the packet, still in its square shape, and chuck it on and go, that'll do. Yeah. Shiny now. It was – not good presentation. No. Nah. And he can't even get his spoon into it. Poached pear is supposed to be soft as. This to get I guess was pushing it around the plate. With his... <laughs> <laughs> and another guest said it looks like a really high class corn dog. Oh, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> Again, they say it's delicious. I just think they're nice. She also wants to know if she's going to poo gold tomorrow. Oh, this is where Aisha goes to town. Doesn't she what? She says, take a photo of it? Yeah, she's like, if you do, can you take a photo of it and show me? Yeah, because she takes photos of hers all the time and sends them to Scott. And Scott's <laughs> like, can you please not? She's like, I do it anyway, even though he tells me not to. <laughs> she's gold. People were up in arms over that. Oh, were the they? And I'm like, and a lot of people were coming to Aisha's defence saying, she didn't bring it up. The guests brought up poo at the dinner table. Oh, gotcha. She just commented back in true Asia fashion. Now it's time for the dance. <gasps> the performance of the season. Girl can fucking dance. They do so well. He is flinging her like she's a spinning top. I can't believe how how little practice they had and how fantastic they did. And how flexy is Gail after not dancing for a few years? Very flexy. Split Split jump. I'm impressed. Oh, same. 
She is a woman of many talents, is Gail. Yes, she is. Smart cookie. Quiet achiever. Good night, everyone. One ten. All to bed. <laughs> night night. <laughs> Mama see you in the morning. Aisha, straight to the evidence book in the laundry. Yeah. She's going to suss this shit out. She's confused by it. Why is she writing this down, Lanes? <sighs> We've already talked about it. But is Ellie stitching up Brie? Is Brie taking receipts? We need more cameras in the laundry if this is the way it's going to go down. She's going to involve Captain Sandy now. Yes. It's it's moved on from her. Oh. She's like, I'm now going to have to go. Oh, it was the cashmere in the dryer that set her off. <laughs> well, this is fucking it now. There's cashmere in the dryer. Off to San Diego. <laughs> That's just tipped me over the edge. <laughs> Next week is going to be so good. Ellie and Joe make out. Like, ugh. Yes. New guests arrive. Mm. Ian is shouting and the stew drama escalates to Sandy who threatens to let go of them both. Did you see Ellie's face? Yes. Ellie's face is like, but wait, what? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. It's not me, remember. It's her. I've been I've been planting these seeds for the last few charters. Why am I in the shit? Yeah, and I've never been in the shit. I'm never wrong. Wait, you're going to get this episode on Saturday, people. And just a little heads up, you're going to be getting an interview with Nick, Chefy Nick, on Sunday. So enjoy. Remember Nick? Remember Nick from the last season? Yeah, him. Nick Tatlock. We talked to him. Anyway, we had a good chat with Nick. So tune back in tomorrow in your feeds for that. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. In the galley, Jono, Jono doesn't even say it in the galley. <laughs> Fuck me. I shouldn't have had Maccas before coming here. It's messed with It's made brain. you dumb dumb. It's it's made, made you dumb dumb. dumb. <laughs> All the preservatives. Dolmatis, I think. Do what we call them in Greece? Dolmatis? I don't know. I'm not Greek. Could be the Turkish version. Oh, all right. Sorry, go on. Fucking <laughs> cuisine queen. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>If you'd like to follow us on Insta, come over to theafdeck.pod. Or send us an email on theafdeckpod at gmail.com. We'd love to know what you think about the show and what you'd like us to cover for upcoming seasons. 